All right, welcome to Current Affairs Taiwan. Uh, this week, uh, Michael Turton's on vacation. He's on the East Coast having a great time, and he's resting up for the fall because we know we've got a big campaign season, election season coming up, and the news is going to be intense. So he's getting in his rest right now while he can. Um, <clears throat> so he's having a great summer vacation, and I'd like to introduce John Rachin. Hi. Uh, uh, Raytron is actually part of the group. Uh, uh, there's four of us that planned actually doing CAT and some other go. projects. Yes. So, uh, so actually, Raytron has been part of Current Affairs Taiwan since the very beginning. So, yes. um, great to have you here today. Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy to be here as well. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, on uh, the Taiwan Go page. Uh, I introduced you. Some people are going to know exactly who you are. And they're going to go, wow! <laughs> it's okay. Um, and then other people, mostly some foreigners, might not know who you are, though. Okay. I think Taiwanese will know who you are. So. Okay, so you want me to say a few Yeah, introduce early? yourself a little okay. bit. Well, um, uh, I have many identities. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Well, but first, I, I, will, I, uh, I think the first thing I would say about me is that I, I, I am a musician. Mm -hmm. I make music, uh, and then I have your albums. Yeah, yeah. And do, do you like them? Very much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you remember when we met? I knew sure. your music long before I okay. met you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like. Yeah, I prefer that identity uh, more than anything else, actually. And I because I also teach. Yes. I'm a teacher. Yeah, yeah. I, I teach in a college. And um, I, well, I enjoy teaching actually. Yeah, uh, it gives back. It's very rewarding. You've done a lot also yeah. with education for um, exactly. children yes. and for adults even, and as yes. well for yes. oh, keeping uh, fresh thinking and approaches to education. Exactly, that's what we need, and especially in Taiwan, you know, we I try to you know encourage uh, the students to have you know to be more creative, mm -hmm. and then. To be able to express themselves more fully, yeah, you know, yeah. and uh, by doing many different things, mm -hmm. you know, so that's why uh, a few friends and I uh, started this uh, cafe, yeah, quite a few years ago, and then we hope we actually hope to do something different. Okay, and yeah, I, I, I guess we are all, we, you know, we all very passionate about the education and the students here in mm -hmm. Taiwan and we always think that education is the key to, to, to change yeah. the status quo. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Sure. Um, and you've had a lot of great events there. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the place? or uh, well, What place? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, okay. okay we, um, so we'll get started in a second, but also you're uh, well known as a human, right, human rights uh, activist, campaigner, Sure. Uh, usually, when there's something with Tibet or yep. something like that, you're there. You perform. Yes. Um, so you 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 know people in this community for a long time. Yes, I, I've been in, involved in this. Uh, I mean, many movements yeah. here in Taiwan, and I don't know people. Yeah, I, I mean, people do ask me why. You know, like why I'm there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But for me, the question is, what is why shouldn't I be there? Yeah, yeah. You know, because uh, when I see those, you know, like suffering, it, it just, I always imagine that, you know, it's me or my family or my friends mm -hmm. will be there if we don't do something about it. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I never really question why I shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. You know, I just have to do it. You know? Yeah. And you're very active in the community. I try. <laughs> I try when I have time. I, I, I still have to work. You know. I know. I always the minimal wages, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but still, yeah. I try. I still try. Yeah. 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 So, all right. So, why don't we kick off? Um, sure. All right. So, just a quick summary here. Uh, um, the KMT has had their primary. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, the primary results were announced today. It was uh, Hang Boy won easily. In the they announced first the and this was interesting the intra party poll, which is showed the popularity of the candidates uh, with the public at large. Now KMT primary and the DPP primary are unique in that almost as far as I know, no other country does it this way. They do it by public opinion primaries. Now. 
<clears throat> this uh, was specifically land lines, which skews the result a fair bit toward Han Guoyu. And the party chairman, Wu Duanyi, which we've talked a little bit about this in the past, uh, had changed the rules several times to make sure that Han Guoyu would be in the race and that it would be an amenable public opinion poll to him, I think it's fair to say. Uh, Wang Jinping uh, and uh, Terry Go, uh, Guo Taiming, complained about uh, a lot of that. Um, now, in the intra-party polls, Han uh, beat Go by uh, 17 points, I think it was 44, 45 to mm -hmm. 28, 9, something like that, 20, uh, 27, 27 yeah. yeah. Um, uh, Eric Chu was just shy of 18 percentage points, and what I thought was actually interesting, they did better than I expected, was actually Zhou Xiwei and uh, Zhang Yazhong. Uh, uh, I actually have met uh, Zhou Xiwei several times. Um, oh, yeah. But anyway, um, <laughs> between the two of them, they got almost 10%. Yeah. And they did better than I expected they would. It was um, interesting, actually. Yeah. yeah. So, okay, just, just quickly finishing the, sure. this here. Han Guoyu, uh, now in the inter-party polls, which is the theoretical matchup between uh, the KMT candidate, the theoretical KMT candidate versus the uh, other presumptive candidates, Ke Pi and Tsai ing -wen. <clears throat> Now, the results came out as Han 48, Ke Pi 18, Tsai ing 16, uh, <clears throat> Guo Taiming, or Terry Go 29, Ke Pi at 15, and Tsai ing at 14, Zhu Liluan, or Eric Chu at 21, Ke Pi at uh, 19, and Tsai ing at 16. Now what jumps out of these numbers to you? Well, definitely, their samples are, I think their samples are largely KMT supporters. Mm -hmm. and Happily, I mean, happily yeah. can't be supporters, and then, uh, but Han, Han, the 48%, it mm -hmm. just, for me, it, it was, I think it's unimaginable, because it's too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's too much. <laughs> and even, even for, you know, the samples are largely KMT supporters, it's just like, wow, 48, mm -hmm. it's almost half. Yeah. And it's not even the combination of the other two, like Cole and Tsai. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't like the answer where we always say that uh, all the KMT or all the hand supporters are fanatical. Mm -hmm. But some, but in this case, it sounds like the only explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Or what else? Yeah, you know? no, it doesn't stack up to the opinion polls that were in um, hmm. <clears throat> published. But something that, and this may this may have a lot to do with it, and is <clears throat> partly Han Guoyu's demographic is forty five to sixty five. Seems to be that's where he's really strong. Okay, they're more likely to have landlines, hmm. um, and his supporters are very intense. So they were much more likely to be home waiting for the call. Sure. Uh, Nathan Bado on Frozen Garlic, the blog, he specifically mentioned this, that he thought yeah. that uh, Han and KMT supporters in general, but Han supporters, you know, very, I think very, very specifically, can't remember if he said that specifically, but sure. um, <clears throat> that's what he implied anyway. I think sure. he came out and said exactly that. He said that can Im Im influence the numbers by as much as 50%. Okay. I was a little bit skeptical that it would be that much. Okay. I thought that it would influence it, I, you know, sure. I, but I didn't think it would be quite, and I think the number he used was 50%. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but I'm looking at this and I'm going, I think he was right. <laughs> sure, of course. <laughs> you know. You want to hear some gossips? Sure. <laughs> A friend of mine who works for this uh, company who has like 15 something uh, branches mm -hmm. here in Taiwan, and a week before the primary, mm -hmm. uh, he got this line of messages from his boss, and actually that message was sent was sent to uh, everyone at his company. Okay, that's the company company line group. Okay, okay. So he has like maybe, I mean the company 
totally might have like hundreds of employees. Right. Okay. Okay. So that line master is actually this asked, isn't Golden Jaguar by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, never mind. No, 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 no. You're not going to say. <laughs> uh, well, that master is actually. I mean, he's from his boss. Right. And the boss actually asks the the operators mm -hmm. in every branch to, you know, like if they get a call mm -hmm. from the, the poll centers or whatever, just tell them we support Han. And that's the company boss saying that. Yeah. And yeah. then if if and usually, you know, when you when the company I'm the operator, mm -hmm. they when he or she gets a call, right. they would say like, oh, this is some company? How, mm -hmm. how may I help you? Things like that. Right. And the boss actually said that during that week, do not answer with that usual... Oh, just answer so, way. Yes, because... <laughs> <laughs> because the, yeah, the poll center, you know, when they hear that, they would say, oh, this mm -hmm. is a company, then we don't need the sample. Yeah, yeah. So... I mean, the boss actually asks everybody, I mean, all the operators mm -hmm. in his companies to re respond that way yeah. to a, a polling center. <laughs> so, I mean, this is, a t this is teamwork. <laughs> teamwork to yes. that effect. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you remember the news reports, it was a few years ago okay. when um, there was the KMT uh, chairman race, I think it was, the chair race. Okay. Yeah, when Golden Jaguar, yeah, uh, when they had all the 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 hostesses, mm -hmm. and they sent the hostesses all out to go vote in the primary. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. So I'm kind of wondering what would Golden Jaguar do this time, and I'm kind of wondering, yeah. like maybe they had some of them, because you know the, the maybe their business gets better later. Maybe ask some of them to stay home, because mm -hmm. it's the evening. It's that sort of six to ten yeah. time when you know. Yeah, um, sure. But I'm not sure yeah. that they have landlines. That's the only thing. Maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> but imagine that. I mean, like, if all those big company bosses ask their employees to do something like that, yeah, that would that would be largely increases the I mean the the the, the victory possibility for him. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, they got, it's supposed to be, you know, I mean, well, yeah, it, it definitely looks like the results uh, favored uh, KMT supporters. Uh, but, I mean, there's a few a few things that are interesting here, is that <clears throat> Tai and Ke were pretty equally balanced there. I thought that was kind of interesting. Mm, yeah. Um, and Han was way ahead of Go. I mean, you know, Han versus, and this is where 85% of the weighting was from, mm -hmm. was how much Han beat Go in the inter-party. And this was actually a big part of what um, Nathan Bado on, Fro on Frozen Garlic was talking about, mm -hmm. is that normally you look at polls of each candidate versus the other candidates. Mm -hmm. But he was pointing out the way that the KMT primary is actually set up mm -hmm. is that Han, you need to actually look at it not Han versus Ke and Tai but Han versus Go even though uh, versus okay. Go versus the other two there you go. so there's 48 to 29 so this was you know this is almost a 20 point mm -hmm. uh, uh, this is 19 points a 19 point win for Han <clears throat> and that was weighted for 85 percent of the result I see and then of the other 15%, it was a 17% margin. So yes. Han swept this across the board. Yeah. Um, you know. So, Han. What do you think about Han now as a candidate? What's he going to do? Yeah. Well, he said he's not going to quit. I mean, like, uh, reside of Kaohsiung Mayor which uh, makes a lot of my Kaohsiung friends very sad. <laughs> <laughs> they were hoping to inflict him on the rest of the country. <laughs> well, Han, yeah, Han I'm actually, joking. Yeah, I know. Han actually said that he's going to work harder yes. as, a type, as a Kaohsiung mayor. Right. Now that he's a candidate for yeah. president, yes. he's going to work harder as mayor. Yes. Got it. Yes. Okay. And make Kaohsiung 
sounds like he's going to make out show a model for his future. I mean, a future country. I mean, Taiwan. You know, for as a reference. You know, for your for your reference to it's to not, vote for him in the future. <laughs> it's not actually a terrible idea if he does a good job. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> it actually scares a lot of my friends in Gaosho. Yeah. 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 So, so I don't know what's going to happen in Gaosho. <laughs> Should well, be interesting to look. Yeah, to take a look at. Well, know. you know they've got the campaign to. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're they've they passed the first hurdle. Okay. Uh, to have a referendum to recall him. Well, heard about that. Yeah. So they, they pass the first level, yeah. then they've got to get it to another level. Yeah. Now, if he becomes president, he yeah. said that he would be president, was it three days a week, I think, from Gaoshan. Hmm. I presume yeah. he would give up, if he became the president, uh, the mayorship of Gaoshan. Yeah. Or, now he's not officially the candidate yet. No. The KMT has their big ceremony. Uh, conference on the 28th and that's mm -hmm. when he'll be the official candidate. Yeah. Uh, right now they just said these are the results of the primary and presumably then on the 28th they'll bring him in and they'll go we now dub the our presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. um, unless something happens between now and the 28th. Mm -hmm. Now the question is will he continue to will he run be continue to be the, the Gaoshan mayor after the 28th? until the election, or is that feasible? Is that even possible? Because when you're campaigning for president, that's a full-time job. There you go, yes. But he's, he says he's gonna do what? He's gonna, he's gonna be the mayor yeah. until the day he, he can. Right, okay. As, a, as what? I don't know, maybe, yeah. maybe the candidate, uh, maybe the, the president, or? Yeah, maybe, yeah. Or maybe he, he would lose, I don't know. I mean, the incumbent president, an incumbent leader, usually yeah. keeps their position. Like, for example, when yeah. uh, you know a mayor know, is yeah. running against a new candidate. Right. But what they do is they they both run the government and use that as a campaign ad. And maybe that's what he's thinking of doing. So, I mean, obviously, Tsai Ing-wen is not going to resign to yeah. be a candidate. Mm -hmm. um, but. Generally, the way it works is that the candidates then, of course, announce all of these publicly popular government initiatives and government spending. And I mean, here in Taichung, um, you know, Jason Hu in his last year in his th of his third term, he was actually really good at controlling the finances. That was one thing he was okay. absolutely excellent at. But he increased the budget from, it was like 600 something, 800 um, uh, billion or mixing up the zeros yeah. here. I think it was 60 billion to 80 billion, mm -hmm. uh, which was a massive increase. Mm -hmm. uh, Lin Jialun just kept going with that. He, he, boost, he, he boosted to like 1.3 or 130 billion, yeah. I think it was. Yeah. Um, but both, uh, you know, both Jason Hu and Lin Jialun made sure there was all yeah. these popular initiatives came out. Spending starts to hit the streets in the last year. I'm sure Tsai Ing-wen will do it. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, so I mean, you can make a case that you can govern and do the job, mm -hmm. but you know that's your that's your incumbency is sort of your campaign in a way. Yeah. Which I'm not. I mean, I guess he's thinking of you know being a model mayor as the model president. I, I guess that's what he's trying guess, to do. I guess. I uh, You know, I don't. I don't know. It seems. It does seem like a stretch. Sure. Uh, but the next. Uh, Really good question that you know if he lose the, the the campaign presidential campaign, is he going you know like continue to be the mayor, or no? Or? Traditionally, you 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 quit if you're going to go for a higher office. Right, like Lu Xiuyan, for example, quit okay. as a legislator yeah. several weeks before the election. That's true. To make the point that. She was in all in. Now a lot of people yeah. complain that she waited till very late to make that decision, yeah. Yeah. but you know she did. Um, uh, Pasuya Yao, um, mm. Yao Wenzhi, he did the same thing in yeah. Taipei. Mm -hmm. um, now that was foolish of him, but <laughs> right. well, I mean, at some point you yeah. you you resigned from yeah from the current position, but 
I mean, like we're looking at someone who is very untraditional, un unconventional. Yeah, yeah, he is unpredictable. So I don't know. I'm just wondering what's gonna be next. Yeah, to see. Yeah, yeah we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, yeah, this week uh, with news of Han, um, there was. Uh, it turns out that his wife had a. A uh, farmhouse in Yunlin County in her, yeah. in her name yeah. that had some illegal construction on it. Yeah. Uh, now, admittedly to their credit, uh, they basically ordered all the illegal bits destroyed very rapidly. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll give a Han and his wife credit for... Mm -hmm. uh, they did something illegal, but then they dealt with it pretty quickly once everybody knew, <laughs> once yeah. they were caught. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then again, this is something that dogged uh, Su Jiaxuan when he was the vice presidential candidate in yes. 2012, running with Tsai Ing-wen. So this is something that hits both parties, particularly if you're a politician from a rural area. That's true. It's pretty common. Yeah. So uh, I don't think that's going to hurt Han Guoyu politically at all. Um, because you know some illegal additions to property is pretty is, is, is Taiwanese as Rhodes I'll find so I don't think it's gonna <laughs> <laughs> you know I don't think that's gonna hurt him um, so yeah other than that he had, he's had a, a, a great week I think I think so yeah I think so uh, I mean well uh, I mean in terms of go go timing yeah go timing uh, I can see that uh, Guo Taiming was having a hard time compared. I mean, compared to to Han, mm -hmm. and it's like a race, and Guo Taiming is falling behind and trying to catch up. I can see that he's he's trying, he's trying, but it just didn't turn out the way he wanted to be. You know what's interesting yeah. is I I thought he was the one who had more momentum. Okay. Going into this race. Okay. But he has. Um, that was my feeling, and I, I could be wrong. But I mean, like you mean, like people from maybe from different sides. Yeah, my agree with him in many different they, ways. They were right? considering. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was coming up in the polls, okay. whereas Han Guoyu had basically been flat. Right. Right. Yeah. And Guo Timing or Terry Go had been kind of coming up. Okay. I mean, occasionally he was above hand, but mostly yeah. he was getting kind of closer and putting himself in the same range. Right. Now, obviously, those polls were conducted the way normal political polls were, okay. and this is a very specific, yeah. you know, the primary is very specific, and uh, Go, Go's support is a, a wider range of ages. He does fairly well among young people. Sure. Um, I mean, like, the story of Guo, Guo Timing is... It's actually inspiring to to many people, mm -hmm. you know, who believe, you know, like uh, my dream will come true if I work hard. Yeah, like him. And, yeah, and, and, I can and then be, I can move I everybody's can... jobs to China. <laughs> 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 it's inspiring. Yeah, for for <laughs> oh, actually, for many people here in Taiwan. You know, yeah, who, he, he is genuinely a successful business. Right, yeah. right. So I mean, I whether you're from from the green or from the blue, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say a lot of people, uh, yeah. Will 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 look up to him mm -hmm. like like uh, role model yeah. in terms of uh, you know like businesses, uh, but I don't know. I have friends who actually said who actually has this question. You know, is it for real? You know, constantly actually. Yeah. You know, because they kind of think I. I in, mean, like in what they come sense, wonder, Jimmy? Yeah, they come in wonder as well. I mean, like he might. Is he actually helping him, you know, to become the, the presidential candidate? Uh -huh. Because he kind of, I mean, like, Guo Timing is there to, you know, to block everyone else. Mm -hmm. You know, like, maybe Ju or even Wang. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, splitting the, 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 the votes. And then the anti hand the anti, yeah, 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 the anti hand mm -hmm. and then kind of helping Han to be the mm -hmm. number one, because you know, you know, like in a race, even car yeah. race, you know, or a, a Formula One race, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes they will put someone in the whole race, mm -hmm. and then to block all the cars, yeah, so kind of help the first car 
to, to become the champion. Yeah. So, I don't know. People talking about it. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> buy it. I, I'm not buying it. Yeah. The reason, the reason I'm not buying this um, is I, he's one of the most successful business people on the planet. Okay. He compares himself to Genghis Khan. Mm-hmm. Um, and he is clearly very patriotic. Okay. I, I, I believe he is genuinely you know, he comes from uh, his parents. His father was a policeman. Mm -hmm. They came over from China. Okay. They came. He comes from a generation and a background that I and he 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 keeps his ancestral ties mm -hmm. to his home village in China. Okay. Um, and he, you know, he, he, so I I feel like he's genuine on all of those things. Okay. Um, and. You know, if you've reached that age and you've accomplished just about everything that you've ever wanted to, mm -hmm. you've got a massive amount of money. He's been talking about politics for a while. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, people have talked and speculated about him running for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually wrote, uh, you know, I actually referred to him as a likely possibility for this year mm -hmm. in an in a article last year. Um, the, uh, but I'm not alone. Um, <laughs> yeah. And he was supposed to have a press conference today, because you, you'll notice that he refused to sign that paper mm -hmm. uh, and for the KMT primary yeah. saying that he would not run as an independent. He refused right. to sign that. Right. During the last week he was complaining regularly about how <clears throat> the, the primary was rigged. Mm -hmm. um, he, you know, he avoided certain kinds of direct questions about whether he would run as an independent or not. Okay. And then he was going to have the press conference today to announce what he was going to do next. Right. He's canceled it and pulled it out, but his answer, the word that's come out is he's thinking about what he can do next yeah. for the nation, for the country. Hmm. So I, I think he's looking at these, I think what he, what's happened is, is he was expecting to lose but not by this much. Okay. And he's looking at these numbers going, do I still want to do this or not? Sure. I think he will. You mean like running as an independent? Yeah. But did he, did he also say that uh, he was going to like form a, some sort of uh, lobbies group? that kind of concentrates on eco economy development and not as a political party, but yeah, lobbies. Maybe he'll do that. I don't know. But he but you think he he has a better chance to you know, like to run as a and as an independent independent I just think he has that big of an ego. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Now, yeah, I mean, because that's really what it comes down to, yeah. is, is you know, how big is his ego, and how mm -hmm. loyal is he to the KMT? Now, mm -hmm. we know that he has this dream of being president. Right. He's talked about it for okay. a long time. Okay. He's gone through all the motions of doing it. Mm -hmm. He's put out himself out there. He's put his money out there. He's not a young man. He's accomplished everything he wants in his life, and he's got enough mm -hmm. money to throw at this. But remember, he also had many reasons to back out from the game, actually. You know, he can say that, oh, my wife doesn't approve it. His harem. Remember? His harem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, he, 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 the, the, the one thing that I think mm -hmm. that would, would I think the, the reasons he might pull out are yeah. if he's afraid of losing and afraid of losing face. There you go. That, okay. would, be, that would be, I think, his number one reason. Or loyalty to the KMT. Hmm. But, I, you know, I, I, I don't know how loyal is he to the KMT and how afraid is he of losing face. He's the guy who famously, when he was young and, and you know, his company was still new, traveled to the United States and basically just walked right in un, unannounced, uninvited to companies and knocked down the door and sold. Right. You know, so I, I don't know, I, I feel like he's not worried about losing face. No, no. I don't feel like that's, but I could be wrong. 
but that would be a good reason to keep him out. Mm-hmm. He's shown some loyalty to the KMT, but the last few weeks he's been, no, I'm not going to sign that pledge, uh, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I can't imagine, the reason I don't, like what you said, that the, mm-hmm. you, you knew people who were talking about that, the reason I can't imagine that mm-hmm. is I can't imagine himself willingly being a pawn. It's just not his yeah. character. He's used to being the the most powerful man in the room, except when he's meeting with Xi Jinping. Okay. You know, it's like, you know, the only person more more powerful than him in the room is the president. Okay. You know, it's like, I guess maybe Steve Jobs is more powerful. Do you know what I mean? But he's the kind of guy that, you know, he, you know, he meets with people like Xi Jinping and the president of... Donald Trump. He's met with Donald Trump. He's met with Taiwan. Okay, these are people who have an army. He doesn't have an army. Mm-hmm. But there's not many people he's met in his life who are more powerful than him. He's usually the most powerful person in the room. Yeah. So anyway, that that's my sure. Theory. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So what do you think about Zuliwan, Eric Chu? Actually, among all the all the candidates uh, of, of of the KMT, actually, I, I, I. I liked him. Yeah, he's okay. I liked him. And yeah. uh, although I can really, you know, like, I don't really remember much about what he's done. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's was, like a really, you know, yeah. poster boy. You yeah. Know, that kind of. But he yeah. was popular enough in New yeah. Taipei to be reelected. Exactly. Um, yeah. He's a he's a normal politician. He did his job. Right. He did it well enough to be reelected yeah, by the yeah, people yeah, of yeah. New Taipei. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, he's, just, <laughs> he's a he's a normal KMT politician. Yeah. He seems fairly nice, actually. I don't. You know, he doesn't seem right. like a bad guy. I can't even remember why he was. You know, like part of this game at first. I'm like, why would he get involved? Well, in because this thing? Yeah. I mean, okay, so you had before he was the most popular KMT politician back yeah. in 2015. Okay, uh, you had Sean Lin getting killed in Taipei. Yeah, you had um, <clears throat> basically all the other KMT politicians were not very well liked, but he was the one exception. Sure, <clears throat> that people had a reasonably good impression of him. Yeah. And then he became the party chair, mm-hmm. you know, and that's it, really. I mean, he he was the one politician that in, on the KMT side, yeah. where people were like, yeah, he seems all right. Yeah, I think he, yeah. he's always played uh, safe, yeah, in a way. And then, but the problem is that you you kind of need you know certain charisma, you mm-hmm. know, for 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 people to remember you, and yeah. Then, so I don't know. I mean, he he could have done better uh, with this, but yeah. somehow I mean, with hand in one hand and with hand in another, there you go. That's not the mood of the KMT or the public right now. I mean, right. the other thing is he lost so badly in the last election. Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? I think a yes. lot of people have just kind of written him off as he's he's already lost. He's you know, let's not try again. That's Even true. though. Tsai Ing Wen lost in 2012 and came back to win in 2016. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, this seems to be the year of, of populist Han and Guo, and these are not traditional KMT candidates. No, no. no. You know, Eric Chu Tzu Li Luan, he's a, he's a KMT candidate. Yeah. Um, Quite typical, right? M- yeah. Much more so, <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, Wang Jinping. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> exactly. What a character, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what he's up to, honestly. <laughs> I don't know what he's up to. You know, I mean, at one time, I mean, he quit. Like, he yeah. quit a long time ago. But then he still had all these uh, supporter uh, meetings across the island. And then mm-hmm. uh, he will make, you know, all these statements about how to run a country. But he's, he's not a candidate. And he's like, okay, uh, for all these candidates, uh, you can take my suggestion or all these ideas and to run the country. But the weird but, thing is, yeah, he is like, a candidate. <laughs> That's what's so weird. Yeah. So, uh, 
I don't know. He's still su- getting, you know, he's still going around setting yeah. up uh, supporters associations. Yeah. yeah. So there's, you know, the friends of Wang Jinping from Nanto County, the fr- friends of, and 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 these are, you know, if, if, for those of you who don't know, these are basically mm-hmm. your local ground game. Yeah. You know, these are the people who canvass for votes and yeah. go out and you know, raise hard, money you know. for you, and so yeah. these are his campaign teams. Yeah. And he's still setting them up. Mm-hmm. He's still running for president. He says he's not going to leave the KMT. Uh, he's not going to quit his party membership, but he quit the KMT primary. Right. So, g- g- see if you can follow me here. So, <laughs> Wang Jinping That's is right. yeah. a KMT party member. Yes. He's running for president. He hmm. quit the prime the KMT primary. He says he's not going to run as an independent, although he did say, when he was asked directly about it, he said it's still too early. Mm-hmm. But he did say he's not leaving the party. Not leaving the party, right? Okay. I, th- I don't know, he <laughs> might. You know, he seems to be saying things that are all kind of co- contradictory. Yeah. And that's something that he... But you'll notice that he, he does say things with a purpose. Hmm. I, I, I think he's messaging. So okay. I've, got some, I've got some theories. I'm famous for my Wang Jinping theories. Huh. Some people are famous for their recipes. I, I, I think I, for me it's my Wang Jinping theories. Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out the, the slot in which he could fit in. You know. Okay, yeah. so here, here, here's his alternatives. All right, so, all right, so last, last week I talked about how he could work with Terry Go. Go talk. Okay. So here, here's 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 how that would work. Okay. Because <clears throat> right now, <clears throat> Wang Jinping's got three options. So let's go over his three options. Okay. One is he continues running for president as he is now. He's way too far back in the polls hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. Now he could be hoping to rise in the polls. Maybe he thinks the winds will be more favorable to him mm-hmm. later on. But he lost his golden boy in Han Guoyu when he. When would any convince him to run for president? So yes. okay. he can continue running for president, but he hasn't got the money because he doesn't have the backing of the party, okay. which means he's going to have trouble getting. And this is his big strength, of course, is his ties with all the local patron attractions. Mm-hmm. Well, if he's got nothing to offer them, I mean, they like him, they're loyal to him in a lot of ways, but they're they're if he's got nothing to offer, yeah. <clears throat> they're 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 not going to follow him. So that's kind of a path to nowhere. Mm-hmm. Now we know he wants to be president. We know he's tried to become the KMT party chair before and failed. He might be. He he's not interested in being a VP. We know that. No. He's been the he's been the speaker of the legislature before. Mm-hmm. He might be interested in being premier, but I'm thinking. Maybe, maybe not. Mm-hmm. It's not a position that lasts long. So, mm-hmm. <clears throat> so maybe. Mm-hmm. So, okay. So last week I talked about I talked about how here's a possibility for him. He goes with with Guo Tai. Mm-hmm. They each have something the other wants. Guo Tai has money. Mm-hmm. Wang Jinping has patronage factions. What do pay, patronage factions need? Money and power. Mm-hmm. How do you get power? Through money. Guo Taiming basically gives a lot of patronage to Wang Jinping's friends. They rally around Wang Jinping. They are not loyal necessarily to the KMT. They are loyal to money and power. Now, they have some, because they're generally conservative people, they have some loyalty to the KMT because it's done them okay in the past. But a lot of them already bolted to. Uh, the DPP, or mm-hmm. really wherever they think they're going to do better. But so, let me step it right here. Uh, so, if that theory mm-hmm. counts, uh, who's going to be the president? Let me continue. <laughs> okay. So, <clears throat> obviously, in this scenario, yeah. um, Guo Taiming would be basically saying, I've got all the money and I'm running for president, okay. and I want you to help me. Wang Jinping goes, okay. My worst case scenario here mm-hmm. 
is he's getting some revenge on Wu Duanyi and mm -hmm. Han Guoyu. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I, I, I think he's too smart of a politician for that to be that big of a motivation. Mm -hmm. I think the only way that he would go out and get revenge is if there's some actual benefit, not just simply for his own gratification. He's too smart of a politician for that. Maybe it'd be nice, but nah, that's not his primary motivation. Now, if, however, getting a lot of money into his people, who've backed him for years and years and years, mm -hmm. okay, he's got a little bit of revenge, and his people have been well taken care of, he's done good by them, mm -hmm. now, this opens up some possibilities. If, Terry Go is a very viable candidate, and Han Guoyu starts to melt as the as the campaign proceeds, and or Terry Go becomes president. Now, keep in mind, Wang Jinping comes; he he could not leave the party, but him and a lot of his people and supporters could go out there and round up votes for a non KMT candidate. So, which means that the party could basically expel them en masse mm -hmm. or just shut up. Mm -hmm. And of course he'll say things about party unity and he'll smile yeah. and say, oh, the party's very important. Vote for Terry Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah. you know, and so he can deliver that. He can also deliver legislators. Oh, yeah. And that's another yes. important thing. So if you want to become the president, so basically for Terry Go, he gets a ground game, mm -hmm. uh, a massive ground game. He gets votes. He gets uh, organizational pull. He gets some legislators. Mm -hmm. Now, this, if he's looking to be potentially the president or becomes the president, mm -hmm. the KMT is going to be devastated. Mm -hmm. And that puts Wang Jinping in the position of you want party unity? Mm. You're going to have to dump Han and Wu. Hmm. In other words, he gets the party chair. Yeah. That's his price. Mm -hmm. Now, the other possibility is Go runs as an independent, Wong gets kicked out of the party, and his prize is he, he becomes the premier. Something like that. Okay. Here's another remote wrinkle on this. Uh, Terry Go buys out the PFP, Chimindang, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, James Song, Song Zuyu last time got 12% of the vote. What's in it for Song Zuyu? His party survives beyond him. Because basically right now, if you're looking at the PFP, it's, it's going to die with him. I mean, seriously. <laughs> you know, They've got a few legislators, but the, yeah. but the thing is they've got some legislators, they've got people on the ground, yeah. they've got the government subsidies, so he could buy that. And that would be a good vehicle to take, because there's a lot of actual ex-PFP members in the KMT who might be able to be pulled back into it. Yeah. That's another, I, unlikely, I consider it unlikely, mm -hmm. but it's not a, a totally so, out, out yeah, of the blue. Possible. Yeah. The other possibility is that Wang Jinping s becomes a loyal party boy and supports Han Guoyu after having stabbed him in the back and the party headed by Wu Duanyi who stabbed him in the back. <laughs> now, he would do it. That, that's what I think about Wang Jimmy is he'll do it. If there's something in it for him. Mm -hmm. The party chair position though is four years. Wu Duanyi is not going to give that up easily. Yeah. So, and it's a four year term. He was elected in 2017, which means he's got until 2021. Mm -hmm. do, would Wang Jinping take a promise that you know, I'll back you in 2021, or, you know, they'd have to give Wang Jinping something that he wants. Maybe Premier, maybe you're the next party chair, yeah. maybe more money for your factions, I don't know. Yeah. They've got to have something for him, sure. and I feel like Terry Goh's got a better offer if Terry Goh's smart. Mm. Wow. Now, here's, a, here's a more, even more complicated one, yeah. is I, if I were Terry Goh, I'd also be trying to get Kopi because Kopi would like the position of Premier. Hmm. I'll bet you he'd love that position. And I actually think he'd yeah, be good at it. That's true. Because I, I like Kopi, just not in foreign policy. <laughs> <laughs> no way. <laughs> but because his, his, you know, 
no nonsense, we're going to get stuff done personality yeah, 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 is great yeah. for running yeah. an administration mm -hmm. and it's terrible for diplomacy. Right. Yeah. Quite practical. Yeah. But he's very proud. He'd be, yeah. I think he'd be good at it. Anyway. Yeah. So, anyway, there you go. Those, the, the, there's my Wang Jinping theories of the week from Donovan. <laughs> but that's true. I mean, like, <laughs> I, I always wonder what he, and like, what he's up to. And then, um, again, the question, is he for real? Mm -hmm. You know, but yeah, I think what you said makes sense. And then it's just that, you know, it's like in a business negotiation, you always you know, make the price higher. Mm -hmm. And he kind of come back a little bit mm -hmm. for something else. Sure, yeah. you know. So maybe his real goal is not the president, but maybe it's party it's chair. Or yeah, something. yeah. Uh, he he's he's he's. Right. I think the reason that right now he's so hard to pin down is because he's making sure he has maximum leverage. Right there, you go. Yeah. Yes, yes. And then it's like, you know, he still wants. You know, like he wants to prove that he he's influential in a way. I mean, like. I'm old, but I'm still there. You yeah. Know, to, you know, you need to talk to me, or you need to come to me if mm -hmm. you, you know, need my support or my people's support. Yeah. And I, I will be that key you need. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I think I got your point there. Yes. So there's something. There's. I mean, he he yeah. he's up to something. He's there always you know. up to something. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so all right, all right. Our last topic. Um, um, all right, the NPP. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> uh, I'll just quickly fill in the news, and I'm just going to let you run with this because there's okay. just so much here. Okay, so uh, Lin Feifan of the Sunflower Movement uh, has just joined the DPP as one of their top officials. Just recently, <clears throat> Huang Guochang, who's the ex-chairman, he stepped down as the chair of the NPP, and he recently held a big rally with Holger Chen, also known as Guan Zhang, um, uh, against Chinese influence on the media, but he did it as an individual not wearing his NPP hat. Now, <clears throat> here's some other, uh, now there's been rumors of strife over, for example, to support Ke Pi or to not support Ke Pi. There's been, you know, rumors of all kinds of strife in the MPP, but some of it seems to be coming out into the open now. Um, <clears throat> here's another example. Weirdly, in an article called Ke Calls for Neutrality in U.S.-China Power Struggle, which has absolutely nothing to do with this, <laughs> yes. um, in other news, NPP legislator uh, Kaolo Yun Pasadal, not very well pronounced, but I'm going to give it a shot. So, yesterday rejected rumors that she would, quote, jump ship to be a Democratic Progressive Party legislator at large. Kaolo said that she had not been approached by the DPP and condemned her NPP colleagues for spreading unfounded information. That's not a good sign. No, and there's know. more. Yeah. Like uh, Hong Siyong, another legislator from uh, MPP. And uh, by the way, yeah. my my district. Oh yeah, she's yeah. my Taichung. legislator. That's, yeah, there you go. And then she had this posting on her Facebook page today. Uh, I don't. She's okay. At first, she's commenting on on being faithful, mm -hmm. uh, asking questions like. Uh, why would Lin Feifan join the DPP instead of the NPP? And then somehow she psychicked mm -hmm. <laughs> later Huang Guochang, the ex-chairman of the NPP, yeah. asking him, like, uh, I mean, like, she said, okay, she said, they, she said, okay, every family could have arguments. But as family, we should be able to talk to each other, not running away from the family. So, I mean, I, I've been away for the past week, but I don't know what happened here. I don't know either. <laughs> and like, she, and when she's talking about running away, is she yeah. talking about Huang Guochang or is she yeah. talking about Lin Feifan? Uh, Huang Guochang. Huang Guochang. Huang Guochang. Okay. So, it, it seems like they have this internal conflict. 
not just uh, Hong Siyong, not just between Hong, Hong Siyong and Hong Kusang, and also the uh, the, the indigenous, indigenous um, uh, legislator, legislator yeah. was her colleagues. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, I was wondering what happened here. I mean, like the NDP, uh, well, in Taiwan, it used to be this uh, new party that brought a lot of hope mm -hmm. for people who are kind of sick of uh, the traditional uh, conflicts between the green and the blue. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, at one time it was really prosperous. And in a lot of ways, it yeah. still is. They've it still got is. More, I in the so. last yeah. election, they got thirty yeah. some odd yeah. county or city councilors. Exactly. And a lot of my friends are, you know, like in this party, mm -hmm. whether they are the legislators or they're simply working for them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're all very nice people, and they 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 want to do something. They and want to make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but why? <laughs> what happened there? Can you guys like sit down and talk to each other before the news comes out? <laughs> Apparently not. You yeah. know, if there, it, it, it really feels like there's internal dissension is finally breaking out into the open. Huh. Um, I mean, now we've also got, and yeah. we've talked about this on the show before. Um, uh, Xi Yongmin, that's his name, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, Yongmin, he's yes. talking about, he's pushing this idea of the NPP running a presidential candidate, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, which Huang Guochang has said he won't do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine Hong Su Yong doing it. Yeah. I think she's too loyal to Tsai Ing wen in this case. Yeah. Freddie Lim, same thing. Yeah. So I don't know who they've run as a candidate, except for maybe Xu himself. Yeah. Uh, but and by the way, just for a little bit of context, mm -hmm. Um, you, see, you know, I, I, I remind people that just because I'm a total yeah. political nerd, yeah. that I went to, after, when the NPP started, uh, they held their first public meeting in Taipei, okay. and then they held their second one in Taichung, and only about two, three dozen people showed up, and I went to that, but it was held with Michael Turton. Me and Michael Turton went to that oh. at your place. <laughs> <laughs> he was the host. It was at his place yeah. that uh, yes. they had their meeting uh, and and form and, and, you know announced their party and yes. uh, Freddie Lim and Hong Ziyong was mm -hmm. there so yes um, so well mm -hmm. well me and Turton are kind of cool here we you know we got to see them right from the get go yeah. uh, they actually came to your place so yes. <laughs> way yes. more cooler than us <laughs> no, 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 I don't know yeah. so do you have any theories mm -hmm. anything. Uh, Somehow, I mean, uh, I mean, based on what uh, Hong Siyong said yeah. uh, in her posting, uh, Lin Fei Fan seems to be the, the like a starting point of, 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 of a new discussion of the future mm -hmm. of the MPP. Yeah. Because she was questioning why the Lin Fei Fan joined the uh, DPP instead of mm -hmm. the MPP. And that's, that is actually a very good question. It is. I mean, he yeah. said before they were morally declining and all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, why, why do you think he joined the DPP? Wow. I... I was... My... Actually, my, my first reaction to that would be like, would it... Would, well, would that ever... I mean, would there ever been an offer from the MPP for the Fei Fund? I think they said something I, along I, those lines. I don't that know. I mean, like, uh, do they offer him a position at all? <laughs> I, 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 I think I, I, I seem to remember reading something along those lines that they did. Really? Or it's okay. been a standing offer since the beginning, I'd assume. I mean, I'm sure since they op they started the oh, party, they've been like, invited. Okay, like they're waiting for him to, to finish his study uh, in, yeah. in the UK and, and then to come back to work for the MPP. Uh, that would be my guess. Okay, all right. But, uh, you know. Well, I don't know. Maybe the, the, the DPP just approached Lin Fei Fan more passionately or more enthusiastically. Or they said, we've got a whole lot more power and money. <laughs> <laughs> Offer him something better. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> it's on the table. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe he came back, and uh, you know, the I, I, if I had to guess, and I'm just yeah. making this up, just a guess, yeah. okay, is that the the 
the MPP made their, the DPP's case was if you really want to defeat the KMT, mm -hmm. we're the ones you have to talk to. The okay. MPP is too small. Okay. That's, a, uh, that's all I got. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> so, I think we've gone way over time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, okay. everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Thank Donovan you. Smith. This is John Ray Chen. Hi. Uh, Michael Turton will be back, sure. uh, I believe, next week, um, and he's having a great time on the East Coast, so mm -hmm. uh, I'm jealous. Um, we're uh, slowly trying to improve the show. I uh, hope uh, uh, sometime uh, in the fall we'll move out of pilot mode, I think. <laughs> All right.